now uh, both on Facebook and Instagram. Good evening. Um, my name is Benjamin Mizrahi, and I am a special educator and family coach. In this video, um, today, tonight, live, we are going to explore on the um, alternatives that we have working with our kids and getting them organized and getting them organized the rooms and uh, getting the opportunity to organize uh, their bedrooms and in a way that can help us. So, first of all, I quickly want to explore with you the following. What are the benefits of staying organized? This is a question that you are going to be asked to be asked by your uh, teenager, uh, whether he's 15 years old, 18 years old, um, 13 years old. They're going to uh, express some opposition to you trying to organize, getting, on, or getting their bedroom organized. So you want to be ready with three key uh, benefits of keeping our uh, home or our immediate space uh, organized. And the first reason is really because it's very easy for everyone in the house to access those things that are in the bedroom, um, not just for one person. Because usually the teenagers say, don't touch my stuff. Um, I, I know exactly where I put everything. And when you come and organize, you're actually messing it for me. So you want to explain them that it's we have to think about the fact that we have stuff here that we need to access so that um, those belongings need to be accessible to other people as well, not just uh, to them. So that's the first, the, first, uh, the first benefit of staying organized. The second uh, benefit of staying organized is that it makes it easier to clean. Through routines and certain systems, it's easier to, to clean when we are staying organized. So it's easier to access our belongings, the stuff, items, also to clean. And three, the third benefit is that things are, they get ruined faster when they don't have de um, a designated place. So when we have, when we put things back in their place or a designated area, we actually keep them for a longer, we're able to keep them for a longer amount of time. So these are just uh, often three reasons why we should um, stay organized. These are things that you can say and express to your, your child. Obviously you can come up with your, your own reasons. Uh, three usually make, uh, you know, make it work trying to uh, deliver the message. Now, um, before we delve in even, di even deeper, I want you to just reflect on your own approach of uh, staying organized because there are systems of organizations that help us and they really get, they're very conducive to maintaining a household, but there are other systems that really just control uh, other people who live with us. So it could be that, um, I'll take a, I'll give you an example. I'm very organized and it's very important for me that my immediate uh, space or, uh, you know, my bedroom, my, my, my entire home will be organized. So sometimes if I'm not careful, uh, the systems that I, uh, that I place uh, in the house for the family are a little bit too controlling. And, um, and we have to be very cognizant of that, that those systems and habits and routines that we're trying to instill in our family members so to make sure that they understand and they feel that it's conducive to maintaining the household and not just to control them. Because especially with teenagers, once you, they feel, even remotely, that you're trying to control them, there is a pushback. So try to reflect on your approach almost regularly. All right. Now, the second thing is that when you apply, I'm sure you read a lot about different or you learn, you hear about different uh, systems of organizations. You want to make sure that the system that you um, employ or ad adopt um, serve you and don't enslave you. So um, some things that we, you know, systems that can serve you are systems that make it easier for you to, again, access things after clean better and faster and also keep things for longer amount of time these are systems that serve you other systems that that make you work harder they actually enslave you so you want to make sure it doesn't happen now to understand the organization of uh, the essence of organization i want you to think about kindergarten kindergarten uh, classroom is a place where there are lots of toys and lots of kids um many many kids in one group can make it a messy uh, place. But, ev but every good kindergarten teacher can tell you that they have certain routines, that they become habits. And each child, this, a good teacher makes, makes sure that each child understands, each student understands those routine, routines and habits. 
and they have visual representations and they have and they do it through singing and they do it every day to remind them and the teachers try to obviously make it easy for the kids to clean up their toys so whenever you think about the organization you want to think how does a kindergarten teacher does it with so many kids and so many toys again habits and consistency so it so it means that you know, on Tuesday you decide to apply a certain uh, routine in the house, you have to be consistent. Also, you have to make sure that it becomes, uh, it's an easy habit to, um, to acquire. All right. Now, um, when we think about designating, uh, designated areas for our stuff, um, many times I see a lot, lots of parents, and I used to make this mistake as well, that um, the way we organize our stuff is, does not always make sense, which means that um, we end up putting things that we use regularly in a, in, a, in a place that is harder to access. So let me give you a quick uh, idea about that. You wanna think about those three circles. So the most inner circle, which means that the, the, these things need to be close to you, are items that you use every day. Okay, so if we're talking about uh, a kid's bedroom, Right? You need to have bins or compartments that really allow uh, the access of, um, that are very accessible, make it accessible um, and easy, sorry, to access toys and other stuff that they use every day. Then you have the, 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 the second circle is the things that you use maybe once or twice a week. And then the, they should be accessible, but not too close to your kids. Because if they take them out, it's make, it makes it harder to put it back and also it makes things uh, a little bit too messy. So you wanna make sure that those items that are close to them, that are reachable, are those that uh, we use every day. Those that we use once a week or twice a week, less regularly, right, less frequently, we put maybe on the higher shelves or um, maybe somewhere inside the closet. Then we have things that we use once a month, okay? Not so frequently. And these items should not be in their room, should not be in their bedrooms, or maybe in the higher, in the highest shelves, um, on the, uh, in the in, in, inside the closets. So you wanna think about these three circles every day, uh, once or twice a week, and then once or twice a month, okay? Now, you also wanna think about different expectation to the various parts of the house. So think about your house you know, um, as uh, a place, there is a common living and also there is a more personal, uh, individual uh, uh, living space. So obviously the kitchen, um, the kitchen rules should apply to everyone. It shouldn't be that only the mother, only the father is cleaning, um, is taking the garbage, for example, or um, cleaning um, the table, right? Whatever the, whatever the rules are in your home, uh, it should apply to everyone. Then we also have the living room also. Uh, the rules should apply to everyone. And I'm not telling you what rules to make because it really depends on your family, your um, your background, traditions, and, and, and the way of, of maintaining your your um, your daily routine. So it could be that for one family, it's a no-no to eat in the living room. For others, it's okay. So I'm not telling you what rules to make. Just think about the fact that you have different, different places in the house and you have um, different rules. So the rules are in the kitchen again, apply to everyone, living room should apply to everyone. Then we have the bedrooms. In the bedrooms, we should be cognizant. Now I'm talking about, um, if we have, talking about the parents of teenagers, okay? So when we have bedrooms, uh, teach, um, teenagers' bedrooms, we should just think about it in, 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 a, in a way that we should not have the same expectations as we have, in, for example, the same rules to everyone in the kitchen or in the living room, just to help us make it, these tweaks in our, in our perspective about how the rules should apply could really, really help us um, keep our expectations in control. Now, uh, under control. So when we talk about the bedrooms, it's much easier if we have three rules that, um, not three rules, I'm sorry, three routines that we follow. For example, um, talking about teenagers, right? So in my home, I have the three rules. We start with when we want to clean up, clean the um, clean their bedroom, we want to start with the garbage, and then we continue with the laundry, and then we finish with the shoes. These three things, if we do them, the, the room, the bedroom automatically, very quickly looks much different, and it looks much um, much more organized than before. So again, garbage, laundry, and shoes. It could be that, that for you, it would make sense to do something else. So think about three things that if you 
um, if you take care of them, if your child obviously takes care of it, care, care of them, and, and it's always the same. So again, could be garbage laundry shoes. You can even make an acronym of it. Um, um, just three things, and they're always focused on that. And then the rest, you can tell yourself, okay, you will take care of it. Or if they resist your um, your organization and cleaning, maybe you want to leave it to a once a month uh, thing. But three things that are essential. And that's what you want to keep it and you want to be very consistent on that and explain that this is your expectation, the three things. Now, um, after you became, after it becomes a routine, you want to curb your urge to clean their desks. Now, the desks is, as I said, the, the, the rules that apply uh, to everyone in the family, like in the kitchen, in the living room, and then in the bedroom, there are different rules. So you should know that for a teenager, a desk is a no-no. You really need to get their permission. I know it sounds annoying or funny, then why do I need to get my, my child's permission to clean their, um, uh, their desk? Because the desk represents something um, that is very, um, that's where they express their, uh, I would say, sense of autonomy or derive their sense of autonomy. It's their personal space, uh, personal space, yeah, and also workspace. So you wanna get their permission um, and you wanna, you wanna ask them, is this, you know, do you want me to do that? Do you need help with that? So just remember, that when you are in the motion of cleaning and everything, um, just remember that the desk should be uh, their, um, their place and not a place where you, uh, you also clean. Now, focus on the big stuff, okay? So when we have, again, when we have the household, when we wanna think about getting organized, focus on the big stuff and try to see if, if it works, if it doesn't work, again, go back, square one, start with permission and build upon that. And remember that the desk is a no-no for them. Now, a couple of tips. Um, Again, as I said, the three things. When we let our kids do things in bundles, it gives them a sense of accomplishment faster than if they were doing, uh, they were cleaning things, uh, items uh, or things separately. So when we put the, those three things together, they do it in one action. And then after like maybe five or 10 minutes, boom, the, the room is much more clean, much more organized with the garbage, laundry and shoes in our case, all right? So then, can help also with the task initiation. Like if they're in a role and you can encourage them and they can do some other things and you can reward them for that if they're young and they, you know, they're, they're, they wanna learn, it depends on the energy. But you wanna focus on your expectation. These are the three things. And again, if your child resists your cleaning, tell them that there are, you know, you expect th certain rules in the, in the house, you know, in the, in the kitchen, in the living room, and then in the bedrooms, you do respect their, uh, their will not to, you know, not to, to organize their stuff, but reiterate the three benefits of staying organized, okay? And then explain them that you, your expectation are the three things, you can choose them, or you can discuss it with them, obviously. Um, again, one example is garbage, laundry, and shoes. Now, avoiding food in the bedroom makes it much easier to keep the house clean and tidy. Okay, so if, uh, and the earlier you start, the better, the, the better and the easier it gets. So again, food, if you keep it only in the kitchen or only in the kitchen in the living room or in the dining, dining space, it will make it much easier to, uh, to clean afterwards. So that is one, another tip that I could give you. And um, lastly, if you have young kids, it would be really good if you take a picture of after and like how they let's say you clean that you clean the room or they clean the room and it's very tidy and organ right very organized neat clean it would be great if you take a picture of it okay or of certain areas certain space spaces in the in, in their in the room uh, for example their desk or after it's clean right and then you print it and you post it somewhere in the room so they have, they have the visual representation of how it should look like how they, how they want how they want it to look like. So having that picture, a visual representation of how things should look like can really help because sometimes when the room, the bedroom is very messy and they don't know where to start from, chances that they will get overwhelmed and procrastinate and push it, just push it and try to ignore, um, ignore the task and do something else. But having this visual representation can give them a sense of direction and be very, very helpful, all right? So that was in a nutshell, couple of um, tips and also what to do when your child resists your organization. Just remember that when we talk about teenagers, we are talking about autonomy, a lot of autonomy. And when they sense that you are trying to control them, they will push back. So you have to be careful, you have to be cognizant of that. And again, you wanna have the discussion of the three benefits or maybe other benefits that you can think of of staying organized 
And then you want to make sure that you have your routine, your way of organ get, keeping your household organized, um, your, your home organized, is conducive to, 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 to living, right? Not controlling others. So make sure it's not controlling, okay? And also that the systems that you, uh, you present them or that you are already using, they serve you and they serve others and not enslave you and others. All right, if you have more questions, um, about this topic, you can uh, send me a private message. I'll be happy to help and, um, and answer your questions. Take care. Bye-bye.